Welcome back to Tip TV. My name's Charlie Burton. My next guest, I interviewed actually about three months ago on Tip TV. He's a systematic trader. After the interview that we did here on Tip TV, he challenged me to a live trade-off. Me versus his live trading his trading systems at a live trading show next year in 2017. What could I do but to take him up on the challenge? Viet Dang, thanks ever so much for coming back on Tip TV. Good to see you again, Charlie. Yeah, good to see you as well. So, Viet, it was three months ago that you were on Tip TV and we were talking about the fact that you're a systematic trader and that you were trading for a private firm's money, weren't you? That's right. And is it, is it now been a year since, you've, since you started trading for, for firm's money? It has been a year. In fact, I've just passed my first year performance. So they review my trading for the entire year. Um, they're happy with it, and they've just sent me a new contract for another year. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Because one thing we need to get right here is that last time when you were on, um, we said that you were trading for a prop firm, and that's not true, is it? No, it's not. Uh, what they are is that they are a, um, you can call them a family office. So they're a group of high net worth individual, and the money in the firm is only their money. So they don't offer it out to the public at all and I'm trading prop for them, which means that I'm trading not on location. I do it by myself in my own home office. So you got really lucky, didn't you? I did. <laughs> you lucked out there. Sometimes luck does get you a long way. Now, it's interesting because I know that you're not allowed to talk about performance when it comes to the prop firm's money because you're under contract there, but you also do um, simulate well, no, you have uh, your systems running on your own accounts as well, which you are allowed to talk about. And we're going to talk about that here today on Tip TV, some of your performance and, and the likes and some of your goals as well. Yeah. But let's rewind the clock a little bit. First of all, you got to the end of the first year. Are you happy with your performance and what you've achieved? Absolutely. Um, there were still a couple of errors and they all come down to the fact that I sometimes you cannot always be disciplined and I miss out on some opportunities because I was late to actually execute those trades, but for the most part, everything was carried out exactly as planned, from the very beginning to the very end. Okay, so people are going to need to understand this, because you've just said that some trades you miss out because you weren't there to execute the trades, and then they'll say, yeah, but I thought you were a fully automated systematic trader. Can you expand right. on that? So what it is, is that the firm that I trade for, they use um, a, a clearing firm to, um, to fill their orders, and the platform that that firm offers is not compatible with my program. So what I do is that once I get a, a signal from my, from my program, I check through it to make sure it meets all entry criteria, all the numbers are correct, then I would manually key it in. At the moment, it has to be like that because of the incompatibility issue. I am in talk with my upcoming contract to have an option where they would provide a platform that is compatible with the program that I'm running. Right, okay. So once you've keyed it in, so that'll be the execution levels, you know, protective stop levels, and I assume targets or however the trade is going to be managed. So once it's actually been keyed, on, keyed in, there's nothing more for you to do at that point. Okay. It, it's fully automated after that. It is able to hold a trade and to exit to trail stop according to plan. However, I always check everything, every sure. step of yeah. the way because you never know, there could be a delay in the communication between the server and my program or whatever else. You have unexpected events coming up, like what we had three weeks ago, mm. where the program is never designed to handle. No. It does not know at all. So that is where I still have a small element of discretionary um, decision making in my in my trading methodology. So a bit like a, an airline pilot flying an A380 with all that technology that they have on board these days, they still have to have two airline pilots there just monitoring the systems. I mean the plane can fly itself but it still has to be monitored so I guess it's a bit like that. That's right. I think um, a lot of new traders fall into um, <clears throat> I think they, um, they look at algo trading in a, in a wrong perspective. Yeah. You cannot just blindly follow an algo like lemmings jumping off a cliff. You have to have full control over what it's doing. You have to know exactly why it's doing these things. And you need to be able to check every step of the way just in case something does come up. And it does come up from time to time that my, my program generates a trade that <clears throat> It's not a viable using a standard position size with uh, extra risk. So that is where I step in and I say, okay, the trade is still going to be placed, 
but I'm going to step back position size simply because there is now more risk that I, as a human trader, can identify yep. where the program has no idea about that extra risk. Funny enough, we were talking about this earlier on, uh, that when we were talking about downsizing, um, about going against trend, and we were talking about counter-trend type trading, which a lot of traders do out there. And actually, you mentioned that this is how it came up, that the firm that you initially traded with, or, or a group of people that you were trading with, all they were trying to do was counter-trend trading all the time. And it, was just, it was just blood on the floor, wasn't there? Well, it, um, the market either trends or it ranges. And personally, in my opinion, counter-trend works better when the market is in a consolidation mode. Yes. So when there is a strong trend and you're trying to take reversals, it is still possible and still profitable to do, but you have to be very careful with your position size. You need to make sure that if you're trading a reversal of a really strong trend, you need to step back the position size and you're not, stay, you're not trading your standard size. Or, or is it even worth it? You know, that's another question you can ask yourself and say, well, why am I trying to go against this trend when it's, it's roaring up? Yes, there's the possibility that it could be a nice uh, pullback, but do we not just wait for the pullback and then trade it back in the direction of the original trend again? Well, if, if the setup meets all of your entry criteria, then you have to take it. <laughs> right? I'm just pushing, I'm just asking, you know. Everyone has a process to follow. Yeah. And if you know how your methodology creates positive expectancy, then you should and could take every single setup. The only thing that I would say to watch out for is your position size. If you can see there is extra risk, it is always better to step back your position size rather than going with standard risk. Okay, so over this past year, you've been trading a, a couple of different systems. I think it's three different systems you said earlier on. One of the systems, the systems that actually you're trading with a family office, but also you're trading yourself, actually doesn't take a lot of trades, does it? No, it doesn't. No. It is very selective. I only want to trade the best possible setup with the most conditions in my favor. So um, over the past year, it only generated 44 trades. That's less than one trade a week on average. Yeah. Okay, and what sort of performance would you put in on that? Um, I know you've got a log of your performance, but if you were trading at, let's say, a half a percent at risk per trade, what sort of performance would that generate? I mean, it's only 44 trades. Let's, let's be fair here to the audience, but what sort of performance would that generate at half percent risk? Actually, with the firm's money, I was only allowed to trade a standard risk of 0.25%. Okay. With the option of stepping it up to 0.4% on certain setups, if I, you know, if I can say that there is um, extra reward to get. And on that, I made a positive 3.79% gain for the year. Yep. To put that into context, if I was to do the exact same trade, but using a 1% risk per trade, I would have finished the year just over 15%. Right, so 1% per trade with only 44 trades, so not a lot, very low commissions, and not a lot of swap, swap rates to have to pay, because this is FX as well, so there's not, not a lot of overnight charges because of, you're only in the trades for two to three days. And it, at that level, once, once your risk per trade does increase, you could be making around about 15% a year, which is still a fantastic it is for me. And oh, sorry. And the drawdown on the three point five percent or whatever it was. What was on on the three point seven nine percent? Yeah. Drawdown zero point nine one percent. There you go. Extremely so, small. My yeah. methodology focuses mostly on keeping losses small. So when I run in through a losing streak, the losses are very very small. And then the next winner usually make it all back and then some profits. So um, do you know roughly what your risk to reward sort of? I know sure exactly, is. on top of my head, 3.06. Okay, so just over 3 to 1. Okay, that's right. and what's your um, win rate? 39%. It okay. is low because... It doesn't I have use, to be high. That's right, I, my methodology uses an exit signal. So it tells me that if a trade displays certain characteristics, then going forward, it is more likely to be a loser than a winner. And at that point, the, the, the decision is made to exit the trade early. Okay. I know that if I do that, I could be exiting out of trade that will, end, that will eventually be winners. But the goal here is not to maximize the win, it's to minimize the losses. And it's done its job. That's why the drawdown is very, very low. Brilliant. 
Look, that's just, okay, so that's on your low frequency trading system. After the break, we're going to talk, or should I say, in part two, we're going to talk about your other intraday trading system and amongst other things. So we'll be back after the break. <laughs>